welcome to Six Time Face of Rock. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for having me. Excellent. How did Missy got formed? Oh, the band formed because uh, way back in the uh, you know early days of high school, I attended a show of a band, a local Salt Lake City band called Destructinator, which I don't think you can do a deep dive on on metal archives or anything these days, but. Um, the two guitarists, Lee Campana and Jameson Palmer, respectively, were the guitarists of this absolutely amazing band I went and saw in a high school gymnasium. And I thought to myself, I have to try to convince these guys to be in a band with me. So I actually approached them after their show at this high school and I said to them, hey, do you guys need a vocalist? I would love to try out. Uh, bearing in mind, I had no idea how to sing, had no kind of training. I just wanted to be in a metal band, and I thought they were amazing guitarists. And I approached them, I said, hey, I want to audition to be in your band, and they told me, absolutely not. We don't need a vocalist. At the time, by the way, they didn't have a vocalist. Fast forward a couple years, I ended up going to uh, to university with Lee, and uh, we started hanging out a lot. I ended up calling him up one night in the middle of winter when we were all bored and snowed in, and said, "Hey, man, I want to start a traditional heavy metal band, but I'm not nearly as good as that guitar as you, so I think I'll sing uh, if you'll let me try." And that was the birth of Visigoth. We ended up writing. The, the Vengeance demo in his dorm room on a computer, programming the drums and just recording it all in his bedroom. And that was how the band started. What kind of scene was there in Salt Lake City at that point? So Salt Lake City scene has always been very interesting. It's uh, diverse. Um, I feel like there's a lot more so Salt Lake City is known primarily for its hardcore music. Uh, we have a very well-known, strongly identified hardcore scene in Salt Lake. Uh, you can talk to hardcore kids here in, uh, in the United States and you can say Salt Lake hardcore and they're going to know exactly what you're talking about. You know, we're kind of known for our hardcore and a little bit of the more extreme metal, your black metal, death metal is kind of a little bit more what Salt Lake is about. Uh, so when we started out, it was kind of interesting because we were playing a lot of shows with bands that were a lot more extreme than us, uh, a lot he maybe heavier or harsher than us, but thankfully, I think the community is strong enough that there was a lot of, you know, bands just wanting to help each other out. It kind of didn't matter what genre we were playing, even though we were playing something a little more old school or traditional. Everyone was accepting, and it ended up really being a great situation for us, and I'm grateful for it. And speaking of traditional, I see you wearing your uh, influences on your sleeve. <laughs> Are you <laughs> yeah. <laughs> talking about my Thin Lizzy tattoo? That's yeah. right. I love heavy metal, don't get me wrong. Thin Lizzy is my... Manila Road... Not on my shirt, I'm sorry. Manila Road is my favorite metal band of all time, but my favorite band in any genre of all time has to be Thin Lizzy. Awesome. Who are the members of Visigoth? Let's say it again. Who are the members of Visigoth? Oh! Uh, so we got uh, Jameson Palmer on guitar. Uh, he also plays in the inimitable uh, Blood Star. Amazing guitarist. So grateful to be in a band with him. He's so talented uh, and so sharp. He's just a wonderful guy. And then we have the incredible Lee Campana also on guitar. He also plays in an amazing band called Savage Oath that I'm sure a lot of you have heard. Um, both of their other projects are just incredible. I'm so grateful to be playing with these guys. And we got Mikey Tresiver on drums, just a powerhouse. He actually came up to us the first time he saw us play live. Uh, my little brother was playing drums for us as a stand-in. He was never intended to be a like uh, uh, 
full time member of Mikey Sauce play, and he walked right up to me and Jameson and Lee and just said, Hey, I'm Mikey, I'm your new drummer. He just told us, you know, what a we didn't question it, we jammed with him the next week, and it was sort of like that was it, you know, it, it never changed from there on out. And then we've got the utterly breathtaking uh, Matthew Brotherton on bass, who I'm so stoked to be in a band with because I've known Matt since we were in high school, and I just feel like as far as guitar, uh, like bass guitar tone goes, nobody dials in their tone like Matt does, and he plays in some other amazing bands like the Odalith and Holdra. And I'm sure a lot of you have heard the Odalith because they played at Fire in the Mountains where we have also played. Just an incredible Salt Lake City, heavy, dark, atmospheric doom metal band. And the fact that I get to share a band with all these amazing musicians, just, I'm beside myself. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> Your first album, The Revenant King, came out in 2015. What response did you receive? At first, uh, the response was slow, I would say. You know, we're a new band and uh, kind of just starting to cut our teeth. But um, the response ended up being, I would say, mostly positive. Definitely some criticisms about the songs being a little overlong and overcomplicated, which, by the way, for anyone who's criticized us for that, we agree with you. Um, so, <laughs> you know, we understand that that's part of learning how to write music as a band, and uh, I have just been kind of beside myself with how much people have ended up connecting with a lot of those songs we wrote, because the Revenant King specifically, that record was us learning how to make songs together as a group. And the fact that people have endured loving those songs along with us as we've taken those songs on our journey as a band has been really, really fucking rewarding. And uh, I think we learned a lot from that record that I hope we applied to Conquerors Up, and I hope we continue to apply to whatever records we do moving forward, because we love you guys, and we hope you love the tunes, so. The odd thing about long songs, the same, if, once you start writing shorter songs, the same people who complain about long songs will complain that the songs are too short and not long enough. It works both ways, doesn't it? It, no. <laughs> It absolutely does. It's so funny you bring that up because when we dropped Conqueror's Oath, you know, we had listened to a lot of feedback and kind of looked internally as a band and all of us talked about how we really wanted to tighten up our songwriting process and kind of write punchier songs that were maybe a little more direct, a little catchier uh, and more immediate and I think depending on your opinion. I think we achieved that. Yeah. Whether or not you think it's a good thing, that's up to your personal opinion. But, um, you know, I thrive a little bit more in the, the tighter, more anthemic chorus kind of oriented songs. Reminds me a little bit of maybe some of our influences, bands like Omen, yeah. you know? Because Omen, most of their songs are sitting between like three and a half to five and a half minutes. And if you're like us, uh, 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 an American metal band that's looking to other old 80s American metal, because let's be honest, Europe is typically ruled, or Europe, sorry, metal is typically ruled by European bands. So we got this kind of like chip on our shoulder, but what are the cool American bands? And Omen was hugely one of the bands that was big for us in inspiring us to do what we do. And a lot of their songs are short to the point and have these big anthemic choruses. So I think we're trying to kind of lean into that on Conqueror's Oak. I hope we achieved it. It wasn't just Omen, by the way. There's other bands, obviously. That's just a band that I feel like kind of encapsulates the, uh, the atmosphere and the feeling that we're thinking about going into writing these kind of songs. Your second album, Conqueror's Death, that comes out in 2018. And, and what changed? 
what changed? Like, all the lessons that you've learned from your first album and applied it in the second, how did it come out in, in Europe again? I feel like, personally, the songs on the second record are more focused. Um, That's what I meant. There were some songs on the first record, I think, that got a little... Uh, <laughs> They meandered a little bit, maybe, you know, and so with the second record, we just really wanted to focus on tidy, tightening up the songwriting and cutting the fat a little bit, you know, kind of getting to the point. What's the coolest part of the verse? What's the coolest part of the chorus? How can we cut it down to just the parts that people are going to be excited about? And in my personal experience, you know, and people have different opinions on this based on the record, but as far as playing the songs live, the, the tightened up songs from Conqueror's Oath live tend to be the ones that really go over well in a live setting, and that is what's important to us. As far as I'm concerned, we are a band that thrives in a live environment, and I think those newer, newer songs just pop off a little better when you're singing along, drinking a beer with your friends at a metal show. I'm happy with how it's going. And speaking of the live environment, at this point, were you able to tour, to festivals? How, how's that looking? Yeah, I mean, we've uh, been touring pretty extensively in Europe, for the most part. That's our biggest market. Uh, particularly Germany. Uh, we play a lot of great shows out there. We just played Athens, Greece for the first time. One of the coolest shows I think we've ever played in our entire career as a band. Uh, the, the reception we got from the people in Athens was nothing short of breathtaking. I guess I nearly burst into tears on stage there in Athens, Greece, just hearing people sing along so thunderously that I don't think I could hear us over the monitor blew my mind, which, and you know, we've also had a lot of great shows like that in Germany too, um, played some great shows in Spain, uh, the live circuit touring situation has been very, very kind to us, and I'm very grateful for that fact. Um talked about some really special shows. How would you describe your show live? What do people see it? <laughs> How do I describe our yeah. live shows? Well, um, <laughs> my perspective is it is pure anxiety for me all day up until we walk out onto the stage. Um, I, I think I convince myself every single time we play live that I'm going to monumentally screw something up or die on stage. I don't know. I'm, it's all anxiety. And then we start playing the songs and fans send it back to us in a way that I don't think I will ever be prepared for. Um, I'm constantly surprised in the most fulfilling and pleasant sense of the term by how much people are passionate about the songs that we're playing. And I, I can't believe it. Um, I, I feel like our live shows are defined by crowd interaction. We never want to be the only ones on stage. In my opinion, as a metal fan, as a person who loves going to metal shows and singing along with the bands that I love, that's what I care about. That's why this band exists in the first place, because we love heavy metal is that the audience should be just as much the star of the show as the band is. And I feel like our audiences constantly validate that concept. It's the amount of interaction, people seeing that, I can get right up at the barrier. I can tell the security people, fuck you, I'm getting right up on the barrier. I'm getting in everyone's face. I don't care what you say. We'll jump down there and people just sing back the the fist bumps, the high fives, the, 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 the uproarious um, 
volume of the crowd and it blows my mind and I, I'm honestly beside myself that I'm in a position where songs that we have written are being shot back at us with so much passion and volume and I can't thank our fans enough for that. It's, it's insane. It is. Um, it's been a while since your last album came out. Is there something new in works? Absolutely, yes. Um, so the reason we've been a little quiet on the live circuit lately, obviously besides tonight, we're here at Milwaukee Metal Fest, uh, having a great time in the great Midwest of the United States, one of the coolest areas of this country if you've never been here. It's amazing. Um, but we have been a little quiet because we are working on album three, and uh, we do have to have that delivered to our stewards over Metal Blade Records in a couple months, so uh, we are working on it, we're going to get there, and I hope you guys like the stuff we got brewing up for you. Um, how would you describe the involvement of the band since you've joined, since you started playing together, writing songs? The evolution of the band? The evolution, like yeah, the evolution. I would say, you know, when we, when we first went into it, we were kind of one of those, like, um, if any of us had a cool idea, it would go into the song, which sounds cool and good, you know? But it turns out when you throw literally everything into a song, the song can kind of get a little bit bloated. And so I think the evolution has more or less been us learning how to, uh, how would you say it, uh, like trim the fat, you know? Learning how to understand when an idea is good, but doesn't necessarily need to be in the song. And uh, I think that's really helped us out. It's helped us write songs that are a little more immediate, a little more direct, and a little bit more memorable. You know, I think we're probably always gonna include one or two overlong, overcomplicated songs on our records moving forward because that's how we naturally think. But as far as, you know, evolving as a songwriting unit, that's one of the biggest lessons I feel like we have taken away from what we've done over the last couple of years. Obviously, watching you talk, I feel a lot of enthusiasm. So my final question is, uh, what do you enjoy the most about being in this band? Oh, what do I enjoy the most about yeah. being in, what, like a touring heavy metal band? Getting to see other bands play all the time, like the fact that the fact that I'm playing in a band and playing music, like facilitating me coming to festivals, like the one we're at right now, talking at with Milwaukee Metal Fest, where me being in a band that's playing here, which you know is we're working, I guess. I get to watch all these incredible bands like The Witcher and Eternal Champion and Night Demon and Pro Fanatica and Incantation and just and Blind Guardian and Hammerfall and all these amazing bands that I love so much. The fact that uh, working in a sense in a band like this is enabling me to come to gathering points like this festival, like Keep It True, like Muscle Rock in Sweden, like uh, Pounding Metal Fest in Spain, or whatever these amazing festivals that we've had the privilege of playing. And then I get to watch all these other amazing bands work their craft, and it's part of my job, and I'm so grateful for that. I, I think that is my favorite thing about being in a, a band like this is the privilege and the opportunity to travel and see other bands do what they do so well and get to enjoy their craft and their artistry and just love their songs and their music and headbang to it, fucking cheers of ears with my friends, with all these amazing bands doing what they do around me. It's a, a, it's the coolest thing ever. Like, I'm, I'm so fucking grateful. Um, I think that's what I love the most about this. Yeah. Thank you.